Hi everyone, it's Heather Darnell and welcome back to my art channel. Today's painting, I just wanted to do a really beautiful beach sunset. And I came across this painting actually by, um, it's from a woman named Carol Sabo or Sable. And I loved it. It was love at first sight when I saw this because it was, the composition was beautiful and the colors she chose were on point. They were so vibrant. And so it gave me the inspiration to try this painting myself as I hope you want to try it for yourself as well. But I also thought of the uh, Bible verse, which is our ministry snack that I wanted to put on this painting, which comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 113, verse 3. And it reads, From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. It is really difficult, especially now, in these hard times, to want to shout praises to God. It is really easier to just throw all the blame at him, you know, and not take any blame ourselves. That, unfortunately, is a part of human nature. We are sin and flawed, and we, we don't want to take any blame for anything. We want to put it on someone else's lap. And, unfortunately, we want to put in the lap of our Savior, who is perfect and makes no sin. He does no wrongdoing. So, you guys, let's remember that all, a lot of this stuff is happening. Rather, you know, put aside these natural disasters or pandemics. Or a lot of sin in life, all the sin is by our own doing. And God doesn't make it happen. He allows it to happen for the sole purpose so you and I can go to him to grow our faith, be more trusting, and be more patient. And I don't know about you. Again, I understand it's super hard because those are the big three things that I lack a lot. But when I look at my son, those are the big three things I want him to have. And I understand it's going to be difficult for him so I want him to lean on me so that I can keep growing his heart and have him understand that these times are temporary. That when we seek the good things and we seek the good times, we'll get through it together. And that's what we are, you guys. We might be grown in size, but we are God's big kids. And he's essentially doing the same in our hearts. He understands we're going to have a lot of hard times. We're really a, an emotional, hysterical mess. But if we lean on him, he will give us the strength and peace to get through it and we'll grow from it. We will overcome it. So that is why we're to sing praises in his, in his name, um, to thank him for wanting to grow us so that we can overcome these hard times and literally put the enemy in his spot. Because remember, his plans for us are opposite of God's plans. God has something good and perfect and holy for us, while the enemy has something destructive and terrible for us. So remember, when there's something good happening in our lives, praise God. When there's something bad happening in our lives, praise God. Because you know who's fighting for us. And you also know who's trying to make those bad things happen. The enemy. Do not let worry take over. And I know you guys have said it before. And I'm going to hammer it home. It is super easy to want to let that worry seep in. But choosing to be peaceful and choosing to be worrisome, you're, you're exerting the same amount of energy. So you may as well pick one. You may as well be the better one. So from sunrise to sunset, be aware of God's presence. Be aware of what he's doing. We may not always understand, but it's for a purpose and for our own good. And if we cling to him, we will come out stronger than we've ever realized before. Hence can basically do anything because also through, through Christ, we can do anything. So let's receive that power. Let's receive that blessing again for him to be praised through it all. So from sunrise to sunset, again, consider God that's always working in our favor, not just in our, on our life, but also view his mighty artistic hand when we get to see his beauty. So let's get started. I'm beginning my project using my one inch tip flat brush with the colors Brilliant Purple, Cobalt Blue Hue, Alizarin and Crimson Hue, and Medium Magenta all mix in with a little bit of GAC 500, which is an acrylic extender. Most of these are semi-transparent, particularly the Alizarin and Crimson Hue and the Cobalt Blue Hue, as you'll see the canvas coming through, which is super frustrating. But that said, I apply several coats to make them more opaque and of course, so they're more vibrant. Notice I'm doing long back and forth brush strokes for not only full coverage, but for blending. Blending is easily achievable by bringing one color up or down or side to side into another color and is where you'll not only see the change with soft gradient lines, but getting a secondary color, which is purple in this case, by blending some of the red and blue together. And although I am already using purple, these particular colors of red and blue will make a deeper purple. 
But the main thing I want to get across is I'm really just kind of playing around here, as you should too. And so try not to focus on matching every single detail. I think what's good is getting better by practicing brushstroke techniques and how to blend. So just enjoy the process. I also want to add right quick that it's important to wipe your brush off in between each color. That way you don't have too much paint on your brush, making the blending more difficult. But don't wash it off either because the residual paint helps the blending process. Notice that I bring each color over about halfway and then continue to blend. Next, I add naphthol red followed by more medium magenta along with some more cobalt blue, even a little bit of titanium white. You'll also see I go back several times adding more Alzarine crimson hue in the top left, but these colors minus the titanium white take up just a little over more than half the canvas. I continue to add patches of these colors throughout the canvas so that more colors appear with undertones coming through as well as more detail.
Now I'm working on the lower portion of the canvas, although I'm not completely done with the top half. But here I'm using more naphthol red, some medium magenta, and a teeny bit of cadmium orange hue mixed with some titanium white to get more of a coral or salmon color. I also just straight up use cadmium orange hue and titanium white separately, but I also use cadmium yellow light hue for the sunset colors. And take note I don't come down all the way. I leave roughly about a quarter of the canvas blank on the bottom for the water and landscaping. This section you'll see I mostly use the chisel edge of my brush as well as the finishing details on the top portion. I also wanted to add in there, if you've noticed the painting flicker some, it's my shadow so it gets brighter as I lean back to get more paint and then it gets darker when I'm closer in painting. Take note with the details, I'm still using the chisel edge of my brush, but I'm not making straight lines, rather I'm trying to make them look more like thin wispy clouds.
Now for the water, I switched brushes to my number 8 flat shader using more cobalt blue hue, which again I'll need a couple of coats. Notice I leave the left corner alone since other details will be added there. Using the same brush, I now add some turquoise blue followed by bright aqua green for some more colors of the water, including a little bit of titanium white and raw sienna for the sun's reflection. I'm still using the chisel edge of my brush, but here I'm doing short back and forth brush strokes to get sort of a rippling water effect, so don't focus on making perfectly straight lines. Take note the lighter colors of the water sit right under the brightest part of the sun, so the two line up and really only goes as wide as the titanium white portion of the sunset. Here I'm adding just a little bit of turquoise blue just to make the water look like it has some movement and a little bit of color. And again, you'll see the titanium white used just under the sunset for the reflection. Still working my number 8 flat shader brush, I'm now using Mars Black for the landscaping portion. Take note I'm using my chisel edge again to create mountain peaks on some, while the rest I just draw on a jagged line and then fill it in. You'll see the baseline of my mini mountains have a slight decline to give it more of a 3D appearance. Now for the left side, I just paint in a sloped line that doesn't go as high as the mountains on the right but comes pretty close and you'll see it comes to the edge of the bright aqua green in the water. I also add a baseline of another distant mountain to the one in the foreground. Here I switch brushes to my number 2 filbert using the color neutral gray number 5 along with a tidbit of raw sienna for the sun's reflection on the mountains, but I only bring those reflections about halfway back or so.
and do the same for the little hill on the left, but just keep it simple by adding a contouring line. Still using my number two filbert, I now fill in the sand portion with raw sienna. Since I didn't leave a gap, I had to paint over a little bit of cobalt blue hue, so I'll need a few coats. But the great thing about these colors are that they're pretty opaque, so I don't need to add much here, nor did I have to add any extra coats using the other colors. Now I'm just adding in fat squiggly lines, so to speak, for the white foamy water breaking on the shoreline. Notice I bring those lines in a little bit to give the water more movement. Here I'm adding a small hill in the background using burnt umber. Sorry my hand is in the way here, but all I'm doing now is just lightening up the sand portion by adding titanium white to the raw sienna since I felt it was too dark. Now I'm just adding a little bit of titanium white because too much pink or coral was coming through in the sunset. Moving on to the palm trees, I switched to my number 8 round brush using Mars Black to create the trunks. Notice I start the first one aligned with the edge of the second hill on the left. It comes up about a third of the canvas height and goes over about halfway into the sunset. Palm trees generally have sort of thin, almost flimsy looking trunks, so don't try to make the base too thick nor the tip too thin. For the second tree, I started space right about the coastline or where the edge of the hill meets the water. It comes up to about the height of where the orange and yellow colors begin and goes over about to the starting point of the hills on the other side. Now for the branches, I switch again to my number one round brush, still using Mars Black. I make seven lines on each tree and each line has a slight curve. These lines remind me of fireworks, so hopefully that will give you a better idea how these branches should be shaped. So the leaves are just going to be simple lines, also with a slight curve, and I'm going to make them going down the line from base to tip, sort of in a sweeping motion. Try not to make them look too thick, otherwise they won't look like palm leaves and will look more like a big blob. And also make them with different lengths. Think jagged edges in this instance.
wow, look at these colors. It's, it's literally like a rainbow sky minus the green. Boy, it is vibrant. I love it. And I just can't help myself but to stop and stare at this piece every time I see it. I mean, talk about being super paradise-y looking too. And to think sunsets like this actually exist. I swear God is such an amazing artist and I'm blessed I'm even able to paint something remotely close to his real deal. Anyway, this concludes this lesson. I hope you enjoyed watching the painting come to life and feel free to leave me any questions or your thoughts in the comment section. Love to hear from you and I'll have the colors and supplies listed in the description if you'd like to give this a go for yourself. And if you like the demo, please be sure to not only share it but to also hit like and subscribe for more videos. But more importantly, remember to thank God for this opportunity and always paint from the soul.